If you're thinking of applying for a health and care worker visa or a skilled worker visa to the UK, then this is the right video for you. What is up YouTube, Dr. Waji here and welcome to my channel where I help you achieve your dream of becoming a successful doctor in Pakistan or the UK. And I teach anatomy on the side. So if you haven't already, do subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to stay notified of the latest videos. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Sorry I've been away for a while, been busy with exams and projects, but now I'm back with a vengeance. So let's continue with our deep dive into visas, living in the UK and working abroad. All right, in today's video, I'm gonna tell you how to make the health and care worker visa online application. Full disclosure, I am not a lawyer or an immigration expert. I am basically just sharing my experience with the process. So consult a qualified professional if you have any doubts or concerns surrounding your own application. Right, so let's go. We're gonna start off by opening the gov.uk website. Scroll down and find the visas and immigration section. From there, you're gonna go on to work in the UK. And here, under long-term work visas, you'll find the health and care worker visa. Click on that and go into apply from outside the UK. Now, this honestly depends on whether you're in the UK or outside of it. I did it when I was outside of the UK, so that's what I'm gonna show here today. And once you scroll down, you'll find the apply now button. Click on that to begin the process. Now, from this point on, the application process is gonna become very individualized. So I'm gonna show you um, a sort of generalized approach, but do take your own circumstances into consideration. So let's say you're applying to live in England. Do you have a current EU, EEA or Swiss passport? I didn't. Now, here's the question that gets some people confirm your visa type so here you'll notice there is no health and care worker visa option so just go for the skilled worker visa option later on it will ask you for your cos number and that's how it's going to pick up that this is a health and care worker visa application so go next now select the country from wherever you're applying for so for example if i select pakistan Next, it's going to ask you if you can identify a location where you'll give your biometrics. So to find your own center, you can click on the link. And once you've found it, check the first option and go to next. Now, before you officially begin your application process, it's going to give you this disclaimer of uh, who's eligible and what are the requirements you need to meet to apply for the skilled worker visa. Uh, keep in mind that you should already have been offered a job from a UK employer and therefore you should also have your COS in hand, the certificate of sponsorship, because they're gonna ask you a lot of questions from that certificate later on in the application. Next, your uh, job should meet a minimum salary requirement. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out about the minimum salary requirements according to occupation code and stuff. And finally, you should be able to speak, read, write in English as well. Now, for doctors, that'll mean having a GMC registration. And finally, they're going to want a overseas criminal record check as well. So in Pakistan, that's something called a police clearance certificate. Um, different countries will have different names for this. So let's dive down into the actual application process. So the actual form is pretty basic. Um, I'll put up screenshots of what most of the questions are gonna be in there, but I'll only talk about some of the more confusing ones for you guys. So, starting off with personal info, the last for your email address. Next comes travel information. Here they'll ask you the date you plan to travel to the UK. Now, mind you, your COS will have a start date on it, but in most cases, people end up traveling to the UK after their start date, and that's perfectly fine. You don't need to put in the travel date the same as your COS date, try to put in the date when you'll actually be leaving the country to go to the UK. So in my case, I put in a date three weeks from the day I was applying for the visa, which seemed like a reasonable time. Next up, you'll have more personal info. So your given name, family name, date of birth, email address, national ID, Next, they'll ask you if you currently hold or have ever held um, a nationality in another country. So be very careful in answering this. If you do hold dual nationality or you used to hold dual nationality, do point that out over here. 
next up you'll have your address uh, one question that gets some people is give more details about your living situation such as who you live with and who owns the property now this is going to be a very individualized answer so if you're someone that still lives with their folks the property is in their name you it's perfectly okay to mention that next a few more easy questions about whether you've held a uk driver's license and your mobile telephone number next section is going to ask you about your passport details and your partner details and your family details so pretty basic all in all the employment section is going to ask about your previous employ associations with certain or organizations uh, this was kind of straightforward for me I just went with I've not worked in any of those jobs listed above see how they apply to you next up we have the all confusing questions of where will you be staying in the UK and in most circumstances people are not gonna know what their permanent residence is gonna be once they shift some people might think oh we'll be in an Airbnb some people think we'll be in travel lodges and later on we'll look for accommodation and that's perfectly fine if you don't know where you'll be staying in the UK you can pick no to this question that's what I did next question is gonna ask you where do you plan to stay in the UK so for this I basically wrote that I intend to rent a flat near the hospital I'll be working in however during the initial days I might stay at an Airbnb near the hospital while I search for a more long-term accommodation and that was perfectly fine they didn't have any issues with that next up you'll have questions about have you ever received public funds in the UK I'm assuming the answer to this should be no if you're not a national next up we have the all-important travel history now this is going to be an extremely individualized section so I can't answer these questions without knowing everyone's individual circumstances what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a very generic application uh, of a person that's only been to the UK once to give their PLAP to and then they came back okay but mind you this is going to be very very individualized depending on how many times you've been to the UK have you been to other countries before um, and what have you so the first question asks have you applied for leave to remain in the UK that doesn't constitute a visitor visa so answer is no have you been to the UK in the past 10 years yes because this person has gone to the UK to give their PLAP to how many times have you been only only the one time when they went for their PLAP to select why you were in the UK now they didn't at the time they didn't have any options that went like PLAB2 or PLAB OSCE. so I went with other reason and when they asked to provide details what I did was I said I went to the UK to sit PLAB2 scheduled on this date simple as that then you just mentioned the date you arrived and the number of days you stayed there you can calculate the number of days just by looking at your passport look at the date you entered the UK and look at the date you exited the UK difference are the number of days and after this section they're going to ask you have you ever been to any other countries in the past 10 years so this you have to have a good knowledge of your own travel history in the past 10 years because they really dig into that in this form next section is going to be fairly straightforward as well they're going to ask you some safeguarding questions and criminal background questions which hopefully most of you will answer as no and then eventually we come down to the extra information section now you don't have to really fill in a lot of extra information in this application because this is way more straightforward than your visitor application for your PLAB 2s um, the only thing that I wrote in here was I'm a qualified doctor with a license to practice medicine in the United Kingdom my GMC re reference number is this all right next we move on to the all-important sponsor section remember how I said they're gonna ask you a bunch of questions from your COS well this is that very section so let's look at this in a little more detail has your employer confirmed you're eligible for the health and care worker visa yes they have next what is your sponsor license number please note this is different from your COS number or certificate number your sponsor license number will be mentioned on your COS under sponsor license number don't get the two confused because you don't want to make that mistake in your application the next question is going to ask you for your COS number or they're going to call it the COS reference number this will be on your COS mentioned as certificate number the next question is going to ask you what will be the title of your job 
So title of job should be mentioned on your COS. Your COS should have the annual salary mentioned on it. And remember we said that you'd need a criminal background check. So next question is gonna ask you, have you reviewed the guidance on professions that require overseas criminal record checks? Yes, you have. Is your employment one that requires an overseas criminal check? Yes, it does. Next, they're gonna ask you which country you've lived in for the past 12 months. So answer accordingly. Can you provide a criminal record certificate? Depends on which country you're in, honestly. Some, some people might have a hard time providing this, but uh, for Pakistan, yeah, you should be able to provide it. Next question, have you ever been in any other country for 12 months or more? So if the answer is yes, then you probably will have to provide um, a criminal record check from that country as well. Next question, is your job on the shortage occupation list? Yes, if you're a doctor coming to the UK, your job is on the shortage occupation list. What will be the length of your certificate of sponsorship? That should be mentioned on your COS. And finally, has your sponsor agreed to check maintenance? Maintenance is basically your trust paying for your accommodation in the first month. And if that is the case, then you generally don't have to show your bank statements when applying for this health and care worker visa. Not all trusts are going to check maintenance. So have a word with your HR if they can check yes to maintenance on your COS. So if your sponsor checks yes to maintenance, great. You won't have to show any bank statements, but if they check no, then you as a single person with no dependents need to at least show 1270 pounds in your bank statement. And those need to have been there for the past month. That is at the time of recording this video, these values obviously fluctuate with time. So do check out the link I provide in the description for the most up-to-date information. Next up, we'll have the English language section. So the first bit says, if you're applying as a doctor, has your English, la English language assessment been accepted by your professional body? So if you have GMC registration, then yes, it has. Have you provided evidence for your English language ability? You've got GMC registration, you provided your IELTS or your OET. So yes, you have. And that's it really. Next, you'll have a couple more basic questions. Um, do you have a national insurance number? Well, that totally depends on what your circumstances are. Some people will, some people won't, so it's not a big deal. Do you have an academic PhD? Some people will, some people won't. Absolutely depends on your circumstances. And in maintenance, again, if your employer hasn't checked maintenance on your COS, then you can select bank statements over here. And that's pretty much it. You'll basically have a declaration to sign, then you make the payment, and that's a wrap on health and care worker visa online application. In the upcoming weeks, I'm going to be dropping videos about the documents that you have to submit for your work visa application, the cover letter that you have to make, and possibly one on the COS. Let me know in the comments below which one you guys want to see first. See you in the next one.